they look good, you know, for, for free balling, for not free balling it, for, for free handing it. <laughs> Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. From ham and cheese to stuffed pretzel, chorizo, queso fundido, there are 50 flavors of Hot Pocket, but not every dish is represented, so we wanted to take some of our personal favorites and stuff them into a flaky pastry crust, ready to shock in the microwave and put in your backpack for an entire day. Today, Josh, Trevor, and I are gonna show you how to make three new homemade Hot Pockets inspired from our favorite cuisines from around the world. If you're following along at home, the time codes are right over there, and also all the written recipes are down in the description below. Let's get cooking. All right, so we are making a barbacoa hot pocket. Barbacoa is one of my favorite Mexican dishes of all time. And since I can't make it nearly as good as my favorite restaurant, Gelaguetza, I'm adapting a recipe from their cookbook, Oaxaca Home Cooking from the Heart of Mexico. They use lamb, barbacoa de borrego. I am using beef. So I have two pounds of chuck roast right here. We're gonna be braising this for a long time, which is a longer preparation of meat. Anytime you're choosing a cut to braise meat, you always wanna go for a lot of fat. All right, so we're gonna cut this into about three inch cubes, and then we're just gonna put this directly in our pan. We're not gonna be browning it because it's gonna get so much delicious flavor from the marinades. You don't want that extra char in there. You wanna focus on all this like delicious earthiness from the chilies that we'll get to in a second. So we're just gonna throw that right into our cast iron. And then now we have to make the actual flavor. What we are using are dried Wajillo chilies. Wajillo chilies are one of my favorite ingredients to work with. They're widely, widely available at a lot of supermarkets uh, across America in typically the international aisle or whatever they call it. If you have not cooked with dried chilies in your life, please, I implore you, do it. It will absolutely change your life. When you soak dried chilies, you can then blend them up and they will actually break down as opposed to just kind of like clumping up. So we've soaked five of those Wajillo chilies in three cups of water, and then we're gonna add our spices to it. I'm using one tablespoon of oregano, one teaspoon of cumin, a half teaspoon of black pepper, and a half teaspoon of cinnamon, just to get it kind of nice and perfumey. We're also gonna add two teaspoons of salt. We are going to add one half a diced onion. I'm using three of like the biggest colossal cloves of garlic I've ever seen. Easiest way to peel garlic, you can take two mixing bowls, put the garlic in and shake it really hard. I prefer to just put the flat edge of my knife over it and just hit it with my palm, and then you see the garlic comes out super, super easily. And it's protein shake time! I always use the smoothie setting. I don't know why. <laughs> Raspberry razzmatazz for Bort? Who's named Bort? So we are just going to pop that over our beef, and then you can let that sit and marinate, but you know how I feel about marinating things and that it does nothing. Uh, so I'm just gonna throw this directly in the oven. We're gonna cover it with some foil, oven at 325 for about three and a half hours. Most people associate barbacoa with chipotle, but I'm using an actual like real Oaxacan recipe for it. However, I still do love chipotle as much as I love regional Mexican cookery, and the corn salsa chipotle is one of my favorite things. So we're gonna stuff this into our Hot Pocket because I think it's just gonna be an incredible flavor combination. So we just have one ear of corn, and you're just gonna run your knife through it. I have not found a good mechanism to catch the corn yet. Wait a minute. Oh. So you're gonna put your corn in a bowl and then just run your knife down the kernels trying to get as much corn meat off there as possible. And then we're gonna do about a quarter of an onion and you want as fine a dice as possible on that onion. Now cilantro, a lot of you out there probably hate cilantro. It's become a big meme. Stop faking it and just lean in. And so we're gonna dice this up as fine as possible. I know people say it tastes like soap, but maybe you just have to reframe what soap tastes like in your mind. Like maybe soap can be a good thing. And then jalapeno. Now the key to working with fresh chilies is you want to remove the seeds. Even if you say you really like spicy and all that, the seeds are still going to be bitter. We've used our knife to just run it through the ribs and seeds. And then the other key to working with fresh chilies is to always use gloves. So now we're just gonna run our knife through that, creating little batons. Then you can just run your knife through there. So we have all of our things diced up for the corn salsa. Now the last step is to season it up. You always wanna season every salsa with acid and salt. Those are the things that are really gonna make it pop. So lime, uh, this is a big old juicy boy, so we're just gonna use the juice of half a lime, about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Since corn is so sweet, it can handle a fair amount of salt, and now you're just gonna give it a toss. That is your beautiful corn salsa. All that like brightness, the freshness, the acidity, it's really gonna offset all that delicious fatty spicy beef. Our beef is still braising away, so to pass the time, why not play some ping pong? All right, zero, zero, game on. Sorry. What is wrong with you, man? Okay, so our barbacoa is out of the oven. We still got our whole chunks of beef, but if you jiggle it on a fork, it'll start to shred by itself. First, first step to eat it. That is incredible. It's 
so perfumey, all that like bright earthy chilliness hits you. You're just gonna take all this meat and you're just gonna shred all of that up. I'm gonna add down a base of mozzarella cheese and this is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna give you cheese, which is exciting. Cheese is fun. But two, it's also going to create a protective layer for any of those beef juices that wanna start like running through the crust when you bake it. And I'm just using a pre-made pie dough right here. What we're gonna do, since it's a pie, you're gonna take one beaten egg and then you're just going to dab that around the sides of your crust. This is going to allow the top crust to seal onto the bottom. You should have done this before you added your cheese, but you forgot. You know, you're not a perfect person. We're going to add our shredded beef. Beef! Now on top of the beef, you're gonna add just a little bit of corn salsa. I have a top crust, which is actually a little bit bigger because if you think about it, the bottom crust is laying flat, but the top crust needs to seal itself around all that beefs. And then we're just gonna use our fingers. You wanna make sure to try and get as much air out as possible because the air is gonna cause steam pockets. And then we are just going to cut the edges so they're straight. Just gonna throw that on a baking sheet with a silicone mat. Uh, I'd recommend using parchment paper. You honestly don't even have to use anything. You could just throw this directly onto your baking sheet. And then I'm going to bake this at 400 degrees for about about 20 minutes. Oh, one more thing. If you want a beautiful golden brown crust on your pastry, take a pastry brush or you can just use your fingers and then you're just going to dip this in egg and then brush some of that egg wash directly on top of your hot pocket. Put it, now let's go to the oven. Guys, come with me to the oven. Come on, sorry. No, I got it. Got our oven. What up YouTube fam? And now it's just gonna, and close it up. And then you're just gonna wait for that to bake and it's gonna come out beautiful, uh, beautiful golden brown. Okay, so we're back. The Hot Pocket is looking absolutely gorgeous. It is nice and golden brown. And a one, and a two. Oh yeah, all that just steamy beef and cheese. That is gorgeous. I'm gonna take this and I've reserved some of the braising liquid. I'm excited. Someone get the ranch ready. Oh, oh, oh. All the beef juices have melted into the cheese. So when you bite into the melting cheese, you just get a rush of beef juices and it's actually steamed the corn inside the pastry. All the flavors of the barbacoa, there's so much beefiness and that like chili earthiness running through it. And then the sweetness of the corn. This is absolutely delicious. Hot Pockets, you gotta get on it. Or Jim Gaffigan, I'm assuming you're at least like the ambassador to Hot Pockets now. Maybe you can put in a word. Next time Nicole's gonna teach you how to make cream. Next time Nicole's gonna teach you how to make a cream barbecue Hot Pocket. Today I'm gonna show you guys how to make a Korean barbecue hot pocket. I am the biggest Korean barbecue fan. One of my favorite things to do in LA is to go to Korean barbecue spots. I'm gonna to try to recreate that same experience, but in our homes. So the first thing I did was I have a beautiful ribeye right here. I got it from the fridge and then I put it in the freezer. So when I slice it, it's really easy to slice. Just gonna slice it super duper thin. So I'm going to throw this in my bowl and I'm gonna build my marinade around this. The first thing I have to do though, cause I'm gonna start cutting up vegetables, I have to clean my board really, really well. Don't wanna get salmonella. First thing I'm gonna do is take my spring onions, then I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna slice them, but I'm gonna reserve the white and the light green part for my marinade. And then I'm gonna take these green guys and save them for later. So I'm gonna take the white parts and add it to my beef bowl. Then I'm gonna take apple. Traditionally, you're gonna use a pear, but I had an apple, so I'm gonna use an apple. This is a very, very, very teeny tiny apple so I'm gonna use half of it. Shred that in there. The apple is important because all of the enzymes cut through and make the beef super tender. I'm gonna do the same thing with half an onion. How much you wanna bet I'm gonna cry all of my makeup off right now. Fantastic. Then I'm gonna take some soy sauce, about three tablespoons, and then I'm gonna add a few swivels of pure sesame oil. And for a little bit of sweetness is our pure brown sugar. Let's add about three teaspoons. And then I'm gonna add a very, very special ingredient called gochujang. gochujang Chujang is a fermented red chili paste. It's an amazing flavor profile, but you can substitute this with any sort of hot sauce you have. So I'm gonna take one heaping tablespoon and then finally some garlic. I'm gonna take two large teaspoons and throw it in there. Now for the fun part, we get to mix it all up together. I'm gonna cover it and let it hang out in the fridge for about two hours. While we wait for that to marinate, I got next game. Ready. Uh, Josh, I actually kind of want to play with Trevor. Mm. Okay. Ready? Oh. Okay, I'm gonna turn my pan up super, super high, and I'm just gonna put a drop of sesame oil. I'm gonna let that heat up a little bit. Okay, now that our pan is nice and hot, I'm gonna start to lay down my meat. So I'm just gonna let this cook for a while. I'm gonna let this cook for a while. Did you hear that? <laughs> you wanna make sure that your meat is one even layer 
So that way it can get a nice char and a nice brown on each side. Now I'm gonna zhuzh it up a little bit. It's gonna take about 10 minutes for us to get it perfectly cooked. We want it cooked all the way. And then we're gonna see the sugars start to caramelize on the outside. Okay, my meat has turned nice and charred. I'll show you a piece right now. You can see that it is nice and browned. And then I have a bowl right here. I'm gonna put in my green onion tops. And then I have some store-bought kimchi. And I'm gonna chop this up super fine. It's gonna go straight into my bowl. Once my beef has cooled down a little bit, I'm also gonna give that a rough chop. Okay, I'm gonna throw that into my bowl. And then we're gonna fill our hot pockets with it. Can I get a yeehaw? Thank you. Now we're gonna use our hot pocket dough, also known as Pillsbury pie crust. And I'm going to cut this in thirds. I want to try to match these as perfectly as I can. So I'm going to start with my bottom layer. I want to leave a little bit of the sides. Make sure you get all of the good stuff in there. Okay, now I'm just gonna put the blanket over the top. I'm gonna crimp the edges with a fork. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of egg and I'm just gonna brush it over the top. And then I'm gonna take some sesame seeds seeds and sprinky dink that over the top. This is what we're working with. Okay, I'm gonna throw these in the oven for about 20 minutes. Now we're gonna make corn cheese sauce. Typically corn, cheese, a little bit of sugar, and mayonnaise. I'm gonna take those core flavors and turn it into a really, really creamy dipping sauce for our Hot Pockets. I'm gonna turn my heat up, then I'm going to add about, this is half a can of super sweet corn. So I'm just gonna pour that right in there. I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar just to intensify that sweetness a little bit. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. About two tablespoons of milk, and then I'm gonna take a spoonful of mayonnaise. Mix that up nicely. And while your milk starts to simmer a little bit, this is when you start to add in your cheese. I'm gonna turn it off, I'm gonna add my cheese because I don't want my cheese to coagulate and separate and get weird. Then we're gonna get this beautiful, stretchy, horny, cheesy sauce. So here's our sauce, you can see it's super creamy, super stretchy, and super cheesy. All right, my Hot Pockets are done. Let's pull them out of the oven. Stunning, love them, they're beautiful. Wow, that's a meat pie, baby. Okay, let's take a little bit of our corn cheese sauce. Ooh, bon appetit. Mmm, it's so flavorful. You can taste the kimchi. You can taste the little bits of brown sugar and the gochujang in there. It's phenomenal. Next up, Trevor's gonna show you guys how to make a bangers and mash hot pocket. So today I'm making bangers and mash hot pockets. And if you're not familiar with what bangers and mash is, it's a traditional UK dish that's made with sausage, mashed potatoes, and usually served with some sort of onion gravy or gravy in general. I thought that would go really good inside of a pocket of dough. And it also gives me an excuse to use my British accent, which I've been waiting to do. So I got myself a potato right here. You gotta cut it up and you wanna cut them into like two inch, two inch pieces. And you want them to be uniform in size and shape. So I'm gonna drop these in the water. Oh my God, oh, it's a little bit, little bit of splashy splash there. Uh, you wanna bring them all to a boil and then let them simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're tender. Hey Josh, while that's simmering, you wanna play one last game? Coming up. The wormhole is shifted. There's a glitch in the matrix. Run. Right then, guess we'll get to mash these taters. Oh, that's juicy. And then we're gonna add the milk and butter, creamy and smooth. Oh, this, this mutter is so belted. <laughs> Three quarters of a cup of milk. Give it a nice stir. Taters completed. Now let's make some bangers, eh? <laughs> Tell you what, you geezers out are gonna love this one, all right? I don't know why you crazy kooks call sausages bangers. I don't wanna ask though. I don't wanna ask why you're associating a sausage with a banger, with the word banger. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in this pan. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay these bangers right down in the pan and I'm gonna let them brown. So I got my sausages brown and I cut them up into small chunks like this. And I think we are ready to get assembling. Let's get on the hot pocket. Right, we're gonna roll this baby out flat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a little, just a nice rectangle. They look good, you know, for, for free balling it, for, not free balling it, for, for free handing it. <laughs> Couple of forkfuls of, of mashed potatoes here. Then you're gonna grab some chopped up bangers. You're gonna set them right on a pillow in a way that pleases you. So then you're gonna grab another rectangle and you're gonna lay that rectangle over the top. And maybe I'll just give it a little push down with a little press down. I am gonna get a little ventilation. I'm just gonna stab the top a little bit. I'm gonna pop these right in the oven at 350 for about 15 minutes or until I say they're done. Right, okay, let's see how they're doing. Blimey me, mate, look at that. I'm absolutely zonkered right now. I'm absolutely Shabama Ganana didn't in there. Fragonet Fabulous I'm excited. I'm going in. 
Oh. <laughs> I just got a mouthful of Pillsbury pie dough and mashed potatoes, and I'm not happy about it. I don't know what to say. If you wanna make sausage and mashed potatoes, you should just eat the sausage and mashed potatoes. Josh and Nicole made amazing recipes. They, they put a lot of heart and thought into and didn't base it purely on what accent they wanted to use in the video. It's not bad. It's nothing to write home about. I don't have any gravy, but you could definitely spice this up with some gravy, maybe dip it in. All right, my lesson has been learned. In the future, I'm not gonna choose recipes based on what accents I wanna use, but thank you for joining us in the Mythical Kitchen today. Thank you so much for stopping by at Mythical Kitchen. Leave a comment about what mythical dish you want to see us cook next. Hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen under hashtag dreams become food to show us pictures of your dishes. We got new recipes every week. New episode of a hot dog is a sandwich every Wednesday. I'll see you next time once the third degree burns in my mouth are healed. Or will they? Find out! We'll see you next time. Bye. You can cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen apron. Available now at mythical.com.